Mazda plans on moving the brand up market. Does the new turbocharged engine in the 3 accomplish that? Let's find out. In all my years talking to folks about automobiles, I've never heard anyone say they'd like a more ordinary vehicle, one with less power. Mazda understands this. It's known for building cars for car people. The latest example is the Mazda 3 Turbo that gets the extra hustle many of us crave. Also available as a sedan that's 8 inches longer, the 3 transmits an upscale vibe, which is something the company is actively pursuing. Some perspective, Mazda is not a large car company. Its ranking in the top 20 automotive manufacturers is… anyone? Well, according to the best information I can find, 17th. So it makes sense for the brand to try to be like the Jeffersons and move on up because the premium brands tend to be more profitable, they charge more. The one Mazda's given me for a week is a loaded Premium Plus model with signature soul red crystal paint at $595, which is worth every penny. It looks awesome. Retail is $36,200, and you might be thinking, Tom, that's a lot more expensive than a Civic or Corolla, and you would be correct. Now, keep in mind that this is a turbo model running with standard all-wheel drive. These are things the Honda or Toyota don't get, uh, not including the turbocharged Type R, okay? Mazda hopes that you'll compare this to pricier machines like Audi A3, Mercedes A-Class, and BMW 2 Series, and find the Turbo 3 a bargain at some 10 grand less. And I get it, but I'll suggest working on the door sound for a more premium perception. The 2.5-liter turbocharged four-cylinder makes a good amount of oomph for a 3,380-pound car. There's 250 horsepower and 320 pound-feet of torque on premium fuel, dropping to 227 horses and 310 pound-feet with regular gas. Uh, save a few bucks when max velocity isn't needed. All turbos shift with a six-speed automatic, and this being a Mazda, manual control is a touch away. In the past, sport mode's throttle response was too high strung for my taste. Seems like that's been toned down. Dampers are not adjustable, uh, but they are done just right to begin with. Obviously, turbocharging means this is going to be faster than the regular Mazda 3, 0 to 60 happening in just under 6 seconds, which is a smidge quicker than the old Mazda Speed 3, and about the same as the BMW and the Mercedes. The true goodness of the Turbo 4 happens when passing RVs on roads like this. It pulls well and gets around slowpokes without any drama. And back to the classic Mazda Speed 3, this isn't meant to be that kind of performance machine. Uh, but in some ways it's better. The Turbo's all-wheel drive dramatically tames torque steer, and the ride is more compliant. It's not like there are marshmallows for dampers here. Body movements are managed nicely. This is perfect for enthusiasts that have significant others that aren't. It's happy in everyday driving, egging drivers on. It's the kind of car that encourages bad behavior, uh, in a good way. Uh, you might be called out by the Homeowners Association, if that's a thing in your neighborhood. This is relatively quiet and pretty comfortable. I don't know that it's luxury car refined, but considering the price, it's a good dynamic. And it's not like owners hop from one car to another on a daily basis. Go with the three and you'll probably not miss what you don't have. Okay, maybe you'll want the premium badge. That's a human thing. Gotta hand it to the engineers at Mazda. They really know how to tune a suspension. The three just loves corners, just loves to be chucked into them. This car runs with G Vectoring Control Plus. Now, what it means is when you bend into a corner, it reduces engine torque ever so slightly to add more weight to the front to improve handling. And when you bend out, it pulses the correct brakes to add stability. This is all imperceptible. But the hairs on the back of your neck will notice it. The front springs are stiffened by 15% and the dampers are firmed up a notch, mostly to handle the extra 90 pounds in the nose. 
As for the six-speed transmission, well, it goes about its business without any fuss or muss. You never really notice it. Yeah, there are cars with more gears, but this one works just fine. And it's not a CVT. More gears might deliver better fuel economy. The EPA averages 26 miles per gallon on regular grade fuel. Against the non-turbo Mazda 3, the efficiency penalty is only one MPG. Nice. It's in the same ballpark as the premium brands. It doesn't have an automatic engine stop start system. The glass on the Mazda 3 is on the narrow side. The back window is just kind of a little slit, so Man, I'm glad that there's blind spot warning in this car. Visibility is just okay. In addition to that blind spot tech, automatic emergency braking, lane keep assist, rear cross traffic alert, and adaptive cruise are standard on turbo models. Premium Plus adds rear cross traffic braking and traffic jam assist, you know, like luxury models. Brands like Buick have something to learn from the team that appointed this cabin. Materials have an upscale appearance. Trim looks solid. Lots of stitching where the eyes can appreciate it. Horizontal elements widen the visual, and I'm giving style points for the release flowing into the door trim. Seats are supportive and heated. Only the driver gets power adjustment. Minnesotans, take note. This is toasty. The normal storage spots are scattered about. Virgos can get well organized. To help keep the wheels scuff free, there's this when shifting into reverse. That's a great feature. And if that's not enough, premium plus models get a bird's eye view. Not all Bose systems are created equal. This 12 speaker system is among the better ones. And if you want a panoramic glass roof, sorry, this is all Mazda offers. The user interface gets an 8.8 inch screen that is not touch sensitive. Get used to this controller. It's okay for getting to all of the features in the Mazda menu and easily toggling between it and Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. But once in those, the knob interface is cumbersome. Those work better with touch screens and I use CarPlay a lot. Next time you test a Mazda 3, would you try the sedan please? Sure, any reason why? It's the windows, at least in the hatchback, uh, they're kind of small, so makes it feel sort of claustrophobic back here. That's good to know. Uh, any other gripes? Allow me to continue. Because of the roof line, I have to duck my head a little bit when getting in. We're both five foot nine. I've got about that much headroom. Knee, leg, and foot room are good for a car this size. Cushions are high enough so that thigh support is fine. And the door openings are big enough so that you can get car seats in and out not too much of a problem. But my big pet peeve, no pocket here. Why do automakers chintz out? Door pockets, those are pretty big. This is an all wheel drive vehicle. The tunnel is a bit on the hefty side, meaning if you have three people in back, uh, their feet are gonna get crowded. My suggestion, keep it to two. Everybody will be a lot happier. And Mazda, if you're trying to go upscale, how about heated seats back here, huh? Unlike other reviewers, I'm happy to take a stand on styling because I'm a big nerd when it comes to industrial design. Yeah, it's somewhat subjective, but I like this, and here's why. The hatchback is very close to the look of Mazda's Kai concept car, and few vehicles make the transition from show car to production this intact. The sleek, minimalist fuselage lines are the polar opposite of what other Japanese automakers usually draw up. Many of those rely on busy cuts and creases. Mazda calls it Kodo design with a less is more attitude. I can see where some people won't like the baby got back rear end. Sir Mix a lot would appreciate this. In a world where people complain that all cars look alike these days, this one doesn't. Good to have some originality happening, and it's not a crossover SUV. Eh, there's always the sedan if you don't like this. The 3 is not available with a powered tailgate, but it does have something back here that I really like. A lock button so you don't have to fish the remote out of your pocket. Nice. The rigid security shade stores inside the cargo hold. It doesn't have to be left behind, and Mazda doesn't leave owners with just a repair kit. It's an easy reach to drop the seats. No pass-through or 40-20-40 split, though. 
it's not totally flat, but the wide hatch design is more useful than the sedan. Mazda says there's 20 cubic feet of cargo room. I can say for certain that five packs of softness and absorbency stuff into the back without any problems. You'll probably load suitcases. I'm a little weird that way. Uh, let's get to red light, green light. Green lights, uh, the engine of course, it moves the car well with an excellent power band and refined growl. The driving dynamics, uh, those live up to Mazda expectations, seems like there's a little Miata in every single one of them, and this one has the confidence of all-wheel drive. And the sleek design inside and out. I understand the hatch design won't be everyone's cup of green tea, but kudos to the team for the reach. Yellow lights? I like the interior, wish it came with a larger sunroof. The six-speed is well calibrated, it just doesn't have the bragging rights of more gears. I prefer the mandatory all-wheel drive living in the rainy Pacific Northwest and it tames torque steer, but not everyone needs it or wants it. Red light. Visibility is not hot in the three, especially the hatch with its thick rear pillar. It's like a cave in the back seat. Would love to see the user interface screen get touch sensitivity. It's clunky when using Android and CarPlay. And small details like easily scratched black plastic interior panels and tinny sounding doors need to be nailed down in the premium big leagues. Whether you see the Mazda 3 Turbo is a premium leap from Civic, Corolla, Sentra, Elantra, and Forte, or a more affordable choice to the luxury brands is kind of a Rorschach test. Humans have a hard time reorienting themselves once a perception is solidified. I don't know that luxury brand buyers are going to be switching from Audi, BMW, and Mercedes and moving to Mazda, but I will say this, the three, is an overlooked vehicle. I just don't see enough of these on the road. They're really good. It's not a Mazda Speed 3 and not meant to be one. The little car company that could is leaving its rowdy side behind and embracing refined performance. Regardless of price or upscale badge, the best cars make owners happy, and the Mazda 3 Turbo has the style, grace, soul, and power to satisfy a lot of buyers. It's always fun to go over Mazda press materials because of the details, describing how the company studies human form and posture to harmonize the driver's seating position. It says a heavier throttle pedal was developed and custom-tuned for the turbo engine, and that the brake pedal position and tweaking focused on calf muscle alignment for better control. It claims that these things reduce unnecessary holding positions plus in-and-out movements to help keep drivers fresh. Other automakers might do these things, but Mazda seems to get spiritual about them very zen. And you might not feel like it's a luxury car maker right now, but hey, its cars always have a compelling feel to them. Gotta give them that. I will leave you with my best buying advice. Test drive at least three different vehicles, folks, and get real world pricing. I have a price quote service. There are many of them out there, whether you use mine or somebody else's, do it because you really don't know what the real world price is unless you check. And in case you're wondering, I did ask Mazda specifically if it was going to build a speed model. Sorry, doesn't look like it. Those who follow me know that at the end of these videos, I usually give you a fun fact. And this time it's about me, kind of, but really about transmission selectors and why I don't care for the electronic kind. You have to understand that when I'm producing these videos, I'm moving the car dozens of times to get the right angles. And using a mechanical prindle shifter like this, I know that it's three clicks down for drive, two up for reverse, two for drive, three back up for park. It makes the vehicle easy to control. There's actual tangible feedback that you don't get with an electronic joystick controller. They are often very vague. Even if you're very deliberate, sometimes they don't engage. Trust me, I've had the car kind of roll away and uh, it's not fun. So that is why I prefer the mechanical lever. Now, I also like the buttons or a dial, uh, not as much, but I like them because, again, physical, tangible feedback. Uh, you know, this is a get to know your automotive reviewer and something that you might consider 
if it's a tiebreaker on the next car that you're buying. All right, I am out of here. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe because we have tons of fun around here. <laughs> That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.